Good morning. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Happy Saturday. Wait for some people to get on in here. See if everybody's awake this Saturday morning. Out running some errands and I thought this would be a really good time to stop and do an update because I know people are waiting. There we go. Clinton, how are you this morning? Thanks for being in here. Amanda, hello. Johnny Bravo, David, Hughes, how are you? Good to see you in here. Blue Unicorn is present. Kayla is present. Papa Chuck. <laughs> how do always stay so beautiful? Are you talking about me? Uh, I'm only beautiful on the days that I do my hair. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Sonia. David, how are you? Dino from Idaho. Holy Grail. Talk about it. Jody who? Lisa, good morning. How are you? Joko, Kansas Cop Watch. Hello, Maurice. I am well. Sending love and support from Belfast, Northern Ireland. Thank you for popping in with us this morning. Yeah, is it afternoon for you, Clinton? I wondered. I'm good, Amanda. I'm doing well. 10 killer, Jack Brown. Irish Rofer is in the house. Yo, 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 Mark F. Yep, could be morning or afternoon for some people or evening. Angela, Wes. So, yeah, hey everybody, happy Saturday. Uh, February-ish time. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of um, December through February in Colorado. We don't have enough sun. Um, people kind of go crazy in the winter here. Anyway, um, if you didn't know, uh, the way the sun is positioned and the way it moves through Colorado in the winter time, pretty much everybody in this state does not get enough vitamin D. So, if you do some research on vitamin D and how it affects your mood, you will find that if you take some vitamin D supplements while living in Colorado in the winter and most of the time thereafter, um, you can have a mood change. <laughs> so yeah, it's a very important thing to note. Cabin fever, we've had a rough winter. We've had a lot of snow, a lot of cold, a lot of cold following the snow here. It's not typical. Hey, Gina, how you doing? So I have been out and about today because I know a lot of people are wondering, hey, Liberty Blair, how are you? A lot of people are wondering about the guys in the motel. So it's been a long few weeks. It's been a very long few weeks and yeah, Amanda, good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, I'm doing okay, Gina. So there is only one of the guys left in the motel. So I wanna give this update about the motel situation because a lot of you have supported my efforts in keeping those guys housed through some very serious inclement weather. And then I wanna fill you in on a little bit of what's going on in Sheridan, because holy smokes, is that a wild twist and turn of a roller coaster with the cops just digging their hole deeper and deeper and deeper. Holy shit, you guys. It's, I just, the stupid is like, wow. But anyway, first let's talk about the guys. So as you know, a few days before Christmas, we had that first wicked, wicked cold snap. We were down in, in below double digit, below zero temps, double digit, below zero. And I went out and found a few friends and put them in the motel. Having three men in one room is incredibly difficult. Having three men with some barriers follow rules, remember things, and not push buttons 
becomes a whole different scenario sometimes, okay? And that's what happened. So <laughs> the call came from the motel that they were all getting booted. But they weren't getting booted by the motel. The motel was working with me, okay? I cannot ask for a better relationship with the motel. This staff has been absolutely wonderful to me at every turn, to every person that, has, that I've ever put in there. It's just a little bit out of the way. It's off the beaten path, so it's kind of hard, and I really have to go out of my way to do business with this motel, but it's okay because they are that good. And the guys had pushed the buttons with not respecting the rules around fire safety. We'll just call it that, okay? We're not gonna go in, into any of the medical conditions, anything else that may have ended very well, only to have them push the buttons that really ended a really good situation. So only one of them is left at the motel. So yes, I'm still putting him up because he makes every effort to be a part of his own shelter. He does have some income, so I'm not gonna name any names <laughs> because I don't want there to be any uh, attempts at perpetrating animosity, we'll say, okay? So one of them will remain there. The other one chose to return to the street. The other one, we don't know where he's at. So these things happen. They just do. And when you bite the hand that feeds you, there's a reason people are homeless. Does that mean that they don't have a right to survive? Absolutely not. But when you're dealing with a private business that has up to hundreds and hundreds of other people staying in a motel that's regulated by fire code, certain things have to happen. And I respect that. It's for everyone's safety, okay? So when you say the same things over and over and over and they're not sinking in, you catch my drift, right? So now the person that's left in the motel, yeah, blue unicorn, that's correct. And I will tell you that the person left in the motel is a victim of an eviction during COVID. He was housed, <laughs> okay? Um, it's hard, it's hard to reach end goals when the resources aren't there, okay? Uh, I can't buy houses. I can't buy property to make safe outdoor spaces. I'm a very, very strong supporter of the safe outdoor space model, especially here in Denver. It's, the only thing I'm not a fan of is that it's a temporary solution on leased land where the city of Denver is saying you only get six months to have this site here and then you have to move it and find somewhere else. That's problematic. But what it is, is it's a site and there are heavy duty fishing tents set up to house people that are either in transition, that are likely never gonna get off the streets, that aren't compatible to live with others. There's a lot of, a lot of issues, right? So <clears throat> I wish that we could replicate this safe outdoor space model elsewhere, but it's gonna take a couple million dollars to make it happen because you have to find the space, <laughs> you have to fight the government to allow you to have it there, you have to hire staff, and you have to have longevity in funding. You can't just pop these up, make them some temporary fixture, and then kick all these people back out on the street. It's stupid, okay? So until, you know, I can bring in that couple million dollars <laughs> or a foundation that's going to back that. Raymond, thank you very much for that super chat. That's much, much appreciated. 
And you should know that it is those exact donations that are help keeping this individual in the motel, okay? Yeah, Angie, I mean, I could, I could lay the plan out um, and it makes sense. But the problem is finding the, the correct uh, philanthropic investment there. I mean, not that we don't have, you know, <laughs> millions and millions and millions of tax dollars to work with, but the government gets to keep all that. Okay, so that's not, that's not for the peasants that are actually doing the work, okay? That's for the government employees. They have to get paid, period. Doesn't matter what the return on investment is or isn't, that money goes there first. So then, you know, hence us, you know, we work person by person. So fingers crossed that the one person left. <laughs> Hi, Pam, you caught a live, huh? Thank you, doing well. We're talking about um, we're talking about some individuals that have been in a motel since December, and then we're going to move into what's going on in Sheridan. Yeah, well, when they spend money on bombs to make other countries homeless, yeah, I mean, boy, could we go down that rabbit hole, right? Blue unicorn. So, at any rate, one person is left in the motel, and today, <laughs> I got a phone call from the motel two hours before I was supposed to be there to renew the upcoming week. Uh, Regan, we got another problem. Your guys having visitors. That was part of the rule, no visitors. Yep, that's correct. That's correct. And the reason the no, <laughs> no visitor thing became an issue was because he let somebody in that room with a gas powered scooter who thought that parking that gas powered scooter in that room was a good idea. And pretty soon you've got maintenance, you've got guests scouring the place looking for the gasoline. Mind you, the next move would have been the fire department. And um, the last two issues already prompted the fire department twice, set off the silent alarm on the alarm panel. And the second time the fire department actually had to respond. So we can't have this. <laughs> so I rushed to the motel to have a conversation with my guy about why did you do what we agreed you weren't going to do? Well, uh, he's homeless too, and I'm just trying to help, and I need him to be my roommate so we can pay for our own room. Okay, except I told you that you were the priority and that you cannot have visitors and we cannot pay for other people that we don't know. And once you have somebody living with you, that's when you really get to know someone. And if shit goes south, do you want to risk getting kicked out and being back out on the street? Uh, no, no, I don't want to do that. Okay, this is strike number two. Next strike, you're out, right? So trust me, multiple chances given over and over and over. Now, are there barriers to remembering, mental illness, all of those kinds of things? There absolutely are, except that I have a good enough relationship, <laughs> Mike V-Dog, too many rules, live free. That's fine. You can live free. And I support that. But you cannot live free while compromising hundreds of other people to uh, be burned alive. Okay, let's just say that. Uh, that's as as frank as I can put it. I am not. <laughs> I don't. I don't condone people blowing themselves up and dying in fire. Uh, we've seen that multiple times out here on the street. Okay, multiple times. And it's, it was, it was preventable. Every single time was preventable. Okay. Playing with gasoline, propane, cigarettes, lighters, torches. Um, you're asking for disaster for other people. Okay. So when you talk about there needing to be rules in a civilized society, you won't hear me argue that. Okay. And that's why I respect private property. When you are on someone's 
private property and you are agreeing to do business with them by these certain terms, that's what that means, okay? So I do respect that. And the safety factor is a big damn deal, okay? <laughs> yeah, Wes, I have to make extracts outside after the kitchen incident. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Quit screwing around with that stuff inside. That's how people die, okay? So I don't mess around with that. Maurice, 20 pounds to help continue fighting the good fight. Thank you very, very much. That is very much appreciated. Indiana auditors in the house. Hey, Aurora. As long as homelessness is profitable for our government, and NGOs, it will not be solved. My friend died of a drug overdose with mental illness in Colorado Coalition for the Homeless Housing. White Wolf, thank you for that comment. And uh, homelessness is a big, big business. You are exactly right, okay? Addiction <laughs> is somewhat of a big business, except it's more of a euthanasia plan. Uh, recovery services are far and few if you do not have private insurance. If you are addicted and you cannot help yourself, you better find somebody to surround yourself with that can support you through that because the government is not going to do it, you guys. Lou, wow, to help with homeless supplies, keep up the great work. Thank you very, very much. This is the definition today to give a fuck, give a buck. Thank you very much. As Clinton would say and post, you give a fuck, give a buck. Guys, thank you very much for these super chats. It's very much appreciated. All of that money is deposited directly into the nonprofit account. The bastards of politics keep fighting. You are not alone. Yeah, it feels like alone a lot. Here in Huntsville, Alabama, the cops closed a homeless camp and tossed everyone's property. They do that daily here in Denver. Uh, Mike, I don't know if you've been following my channel for very long, but um, that's one of the things that uh, we highlight is um, really that euthanasia program of the homeless. Take everything they own, especially in uh, inclement weather and throw it all in the trash and then not have adequate shelter. Anyway, I can't go down this rabbit hole because I've got to keep my head above water emotionally and uh, we're just going to keep moving forward with the little bits that we can help with. I'm supposed to be on a break. I'm not on a break. I'm on to three new projects with some friends out here on the streets. One of them being the one that's left in the motel. It's going to be probably six months to two years before we, we secure any housing for him. How long can we keep him there? I don't know. Um, I don't know what's gonna happen with him. And uh, medically, he's not fit to be out on the street. Okay, worked his whole life, has social security. It's not enough to live. It's not enough to move, it's not enough to live. So what are we gonna do as a society? You know, are we gonna try? Or are we gonna make it worse for him? Okay, so enough of that. But that is the scoop on the guys in the motel. There's only one guy left, and he's on strike two. So there's that. And I try very hard, and I continue to try. <laughs> on to Sheridan. The crazies at Sheridan. Holy smokes. DMA, are you in here? Denver Metro Audits. Everybody stay tuned. I do believe that there will be, oh, Johnny Bravo, thank you very much. You didn't have to do that, but that's much appreciated. 153 people in here. Everyone gives a dollar. That's 153 more dollars than what we started with today. Jack Brown raises rabbits. That's good. Hey, DMA. So, I'm glad you're in here because there are some things that you guys really need to be aware of, okay, going on in Sheridan. And the number one thing is Police Chief Jeffrey Martinez. This guy is bad news, you guys. I'm talking bad news, OK? 
okay? He just continues to dig this hole deeper and deeper and deeper. Okay. This guy is determined to let you know that he is large and in charge and his ego is going to take him to places he's never been before. <laughs> Many of you are already aware, and if you're not, you need to be. Jeffrey Martinez and his commander Connolly showed up to the Arapahoe County Courts to try to allow the judge to let them talk about being victims, about these cops being victims. And and or try to double down on a protection order against Denver Metro audits because for whatever reason, they think he doesn't have a right to redress government or have a voice or show up at city council meetings or record his interactions with government or anyone else for that matter. But they've got a huge, huge beef with Denver Metro audits. If I had to guess, me just guessing speculation it's that uh, latino to latino respect and uh police chief jeffrey martinez he thinks he's owed okay did you ain't owed shit and you should have quit while you were ahead because you have dug your hole so freaking deep now you don't know how you're gonna get out of it so they had shown up to one of these hearings and the judge said, absolutely not. You cannot put anything on the record without an attorney present for the accused. Lewis, thank you. <laughs> thank you for giving a fuck. I give a few fucks, Lewis. Thank you very much. That's much appreciated. It's $124, you guys. 176 people are watching. Each one of you has to amount to a dollar in here. <laughs> so if you're not aware of the entire backstory, five people were arrested and charged with unlawful conduct on public property simply for going to Sheridan, the town of Sheridan in Sheridan, Colorado, and doing records requests and recording their interactions with government. There were 15 of us there. Five got arrested. The cops were stupid. They thought they were going to scare everybody away by their first arrest of Armac. They thought everybody was going to run. Uh, Bruce choked Liz, Aurora Transparency, during that arrest. So everybody was charged with this back in December. So now it's making its way through the DA's office and um, county court. Okay. And here's the latest. They're trying to add charges. Thank you, Stacy. Wow, very nice of you. Much appreciated. They're trying to add charges. So uh, we'll see if they're going to continue to add charges on everybody on the 28th of February. Everybody's due back in court. But in the meantime, I continue my activism and watching. And apparently, it's their mission to tag us as some kind of collective gang. I don't know what they're trying to drum up, except to get a judge or a DA convinced that we are inciting violence when it's completely the other way around. <laughs> completely the other way around. Wow, Ken. Thank you very much for that $10. Holy smokes, you guys, we're up to 143. So the truth of the matter is Jeffrey Martinez in his three page victim impact statement wrote in there, in his own words, that the actions of DMA and Benson must be curtailed and will have dire consequences that are going to unnecessarily force law enforcement into a deadly encounter. Angela, whoa, boom, right there. Thank you very much. $100 super chat put us at 200, 
and $47. Thanks guys. That's awesome. Much, much appreciated. Today's, uh, <laughs> today's theme, give a fuck, give a buck. That's awesome. Look at this rolling in. Thank you guys. Lawn jockey. Woo, woo. Kayla, $1.99. Woo, woo. My PayPal is in the about section of the channel. If any of my mods want to put the link tree link in the chat, you guys, that takes me into, that takes everybody into those. We got Cash App flowing in. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. This is a big deal. This is what keeps me going. This is what keeps me able to do what I'm doing for my homeless friends, okay? So, yeah. Oh, good old Chief Martinez. Put this statement in writing. And then all of a sudden, Denver Metro Audits and myself started getting these very detailed death threats. Whoever's got this information, they're digging pretty deep. They're going to kill our family members. They're going to burn down our houses. They're going to murder us in public. So, I'm sure Jeffrey Martinez doesn't have anything to do with that, right? I mean, this guy thinks he is at war. He thinks this is the time to bring in associated gang members, family members that have no problem, his family members have no problem resorting to violence. You're going to see it all laid out when another more cash app, Bokomo. You're going to see, no, that wasn't Bokomo. Shauna, thank you very much. You're going to see who was inciting violence at this last city council meeting. That's right. Denver Metro Audits, they know our addresses, our family's addresses, our family members' names, social security numbers. It's very weird. It's very weird. Um, however, I first thought it was probably, you know, those real fun people who get on Facebook and use everybody else's content to try to go start a channel to make fun of what other people are doing and make money off of it, right? Oh yeah, we know those people. They're sitting in the basement gaming 24 seven, waiting for mom to bring their macaroni and cheese while they're down there making animal sounds. David, wow, thank you very much for your cash app. But I think it's a little bit more than that at this point. So, Jody, thank you very, very much, cash app. Yeah, we're definitely over uh, our $200 mark, you guys, today. Let's double it. Thank you very much. So... Things are very weird in Sheridan, and they're going to continue to get more weird because here's another tidbit of information that you don't know about yet. Two records requests were done this past week. One was for their video of the city council meeting where things were getting violent. Brandon, thank you very much. The other was a request for court transcripts. If you'll recall, my last live stream, I had simply gone in to view the open court. And I had talked to the court administrator earlier that day about an order that was on the wall downstairs by the police department that was written by this same judge in 2005. A little bit about the judge. My math is correct. He's 86 years old. The guy is wheelchair bound. He's incontinent. He gets into a certain position in his chair in the courtroom so he can piss himself. Yes, I know these things. He is um, a geezer of epic proportion when it comes to what an authoritarian 
uh, is, we'll just uh, put it at that. This is a, this is a man who was never happy in life and thinks that women should be seen and not heard and serve him. He's got a bunch of women scurrying all over him in that courtroom, um, treating him like an infant because he's senile. He can't remember things that were said from one minute to the next, okay? It doesn't take long to come to these conclusions, okay? Go see it. It's an open courtroom. But here's what's going to happen to you if you go in there. This judge is going to ask you what you're doing in his courtroom. And he's going to ask you if you have any questions. Don't have any questions. Unfortunately, I had a question. And he didn't like the question. So he chose not to answer it when he called me out in his open court. I was very polite, very professional. With all due respect, sir. All I asked was for you to cite your authority for a specific order that you wrote. He told me he was going to throw me in jail for 60 days. He told me you better think long and hard about what you're going to say next because I'll throw you in jail for 60 days with no bond. <sighs> okay, dude. Wow. So you've, you've lost all your manhood. You've been an angry, hateful, bitter person your entire life. Um, you only know jail because you're a senile old fuck now. You've got a caregiver in the courtroom with you that's standing up, interrupting court, telling me that I need to leave as she's wheeling you out to your car in your wheelchair because you can't drive. And lo and behold, I followed process to request those transcripts. And guess what? Between those transcripts and that video request that Denver Metro audits did for the video of the city council meeting was denied. Guess why? They're hiding behind the Criminal Justice Records Act. They're calling them criminal investigations now. Yep. Victor, thank you very, very much. Do we have a civil rights attorney in our area that could possibly contact? Oh yeah, they're aware. They're very aware. And, uh, there is one very much on this case, okay? So I wanna to repeat to you, those two records requests that would have shown their behavior have now been buried and will not be released because they are part of a criminal justice record act. A court transcript and video from the city council meeting that shows them behaving very, very badly. You guys, there is a lot of bad shit going on in Sheridan. A lot. And like I said, we've just touched the tip of the iceberg. Here's another one for you. I wanted the body cam footage from Officer or Sergeant Marquez from when we went and cop watched a few weeks ago and the very first interaction we had with Sheridan, they were on a homeless call. I've told you guys about this numerous times. We met a new friend, Chris. We put him on the bus. We sent him home. He's seeking rehab. They had a, they had a co-responder with him. The cops did. And they did nothing. But this last city council meeting, they spent a good hour touting and talking about all the wonderfulness in their co-responder program. They're lying. They don't do shit. They criminalize the hell out of people. They do nothing to solve homelessness. They threaten criminalize, wash, rinse, repeat. That's what they do. And a lot of my interactions that take me into Sheridan have to do with homelessness. I have another homeless friend right now that's wrapped up over there with this same judge. And he can't get out in front of the eight ball. It's because all that judge knows is jail. His goal is jail. That's it. So they've got some serious, serious issues. They're lying about their, their, the dollars that they're using through Tri-City to reach out to homelessness, to get these people connected with resources. They're lying. Um, if you want an example of a judge, Joe Jefferson in Inglewood, he actually works to connect people to services. This guy, I don't think he even knows what day it is. I'm sure he doesn't know what day it is. 
I don't think he could remember anything about connecting people with services. The guy is senile, okay? Is the woman who lost her camper okay? I know she had a parent death. I hope she is okay. You're talking about Chandra, Kayla. I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't seen Chandra. Not sure what happened, but we put Chandra in motel for a couple of weeks. And she essentially disappeared on her own because of her unwillingness to be a part and take control of her situation. I don't know. I don't know where she's at. Have you heard of or have any update on Chris? I do not, Steve-O. I do not. Thank you, Gail. I appreciate that. Read the Declaration of Independence and know your duty as an American. Thank you. Um, always, as always, Jack Brown. And get out there and do your part in civic redress, you guys. And things like this that are happen, happening in Sheridan, they're happening everywhere. Okay, These municipalities are getting away with a lot of stuff, especially in Colorado. Okay, so Sheridan is nothing short of a bunch of socialists in charge of the place. And if you want to argue that, I dare you. Let's argue that. Because these people are borderline communists. Okay? There is no... that. Th this is a... This is a we work to protect government. That city council doesn't give a shit. And if anybody thought Whitaker's speech was something of a celebration, you guys, you weren't hearing it. This guy literally told you at the city council meeting that speech defines morality. And if he doesn't like what he hears, then you are immoral and you will be treated as such. You better think about that. Everybody applauded the guy. They thought it was fucking fantastic. That was the speech of a goddamn dictator. You better go back and listen to that real carefully. Well, except you can't now because <laughs> Sheridan's not giving up the video. We have to wait for Denver Metro Audit's video to hit. <laughs> He's the one that possesses the material. <laughs> there are some other people out there that uh, did record that, uh, that Zoom meeting. So you guys, for those of you that want to uh, highlight some content, go listen to Whitaker's speech. It's bad news, you guys. It's really bad news. And then you got Sally. All Sally wants to do is stand up and pray. Okay? That's great. Freedom of religion at a city council meeting. Okay, how come prayers aren't being done by members of the public? Weird? Yeah, very weird. Because if you want to pray, you can only pray for three minutes publicly. Sally... Sally gets the podium whenever she wants, as long as she wants, as long as her prayer goes on and on and on. You guys, Sheridan is a very, very dangerous place. And it's getting more dangerous because the cops are making it that way. And I guarantee you, they are doing everything they can with the district attorney's office begging them to drum up charges, to orchestrate arrest warrants, those cops have put so much stuff about me in everybody else's discovery, it's a little disturbing, their infatuation. And when you're going into a city council meeting and the only people at that meeting with guns are the cops and their friends, you guys need to think about that, okay? You need to think about that situation that's deliberately being created to hem you up. For those of you that go to Sheridan, that are going to continue to go to Sheridan City Council meetings, if you watched that video very carefully, you saw Martinez's friends incite the chaos. You saw the cops on the ready came up and out of a room. They were in that room with their gloves on. Boom, lickety split, going hands on. 
not with the people that were inciting the violence, but for those that were there for civil, civic redress. Then they were kicked out of the building under the threat of arrest, while those inciting the violence were protected by the police. Okay? If you watch the video, all of those with cameras are leaving the property. All of those inciting the violence are standing behind the cops. Don't think that those cops are going to stop short of open firing. And those that are being, what's the right word? Coached to touch. They're the ones that are being sacrificed by Martinez as Martinez sits up on his little podium, just watching the whole thing. He knows he's got gang members there. So you guys, Sheridan, it's a dangerous place and it's getting more dangerous. And that ringleader is Martinez and Granberry's giving him the green flag the whole way. I just want you to think about those things. As those of us that want to hold our government accountable, expect transparency, and utilize speech that they don't like, just think about that as you're moving forward, okay? I also think there's some other things going on within the city. The clerk, for one, finally realizing that her name is attached to all of these records responses when she's not responding to them at all. Bill Hayashi, the contracted city attorney, is the one that put his signature on those denials for the city council video and for the court transcript, calling them an open criminal investigation. Back to what I was saying earlier about the body cam footage when we were cop watching and I got off topic because we were talking about Chris. Sergeant Marquez, I wanted his body cam footage. I went and did a request at Sheridan, the evidence tech comes out to give me a quote. He wants $150 because it's going to take him three hours to go through the body cam footage and redact all of the information that's not releasable. This interaction wasn't even five minutes. They know when they are caught they're going to do everything they can to not release that video and that material. This place is dirty as hell. Yep. And this Liberty Blair, I've been talking about going down this rabbit hole for body cam footage. <coughs> and the way the laws were written for, for cops getting body cams, we, we've got seriously big problems big big problems and the other thing that i really need to research is why the courts get to call why these municipal courts get to call their open court cases or anything they want a criminal justice records act because it doesn't work that way in the higher courts in county and district court that's the whole reason for open court you can go to the records department of any courthouse and say, I want the court case file for this case, this name, this date of birth, whatever. That is the whole purpose of a free country having open court. But we're not having open court anymore, you guys. Secret court is well underway and it is happening at these lowest levels in municipal government. And if you don't get out there and exercise your rights, we're going to lose them. We're going, we are losing them. It's because people don't give a shit. They want to be masked. They want to be slaves to their masters. Stop it. 
Go do something. Push back. Call a cop, a dirty motherfucker. Do something. Okay? Because three, four, five, ten of us doing it sporadically throughout the country? Okay, yeah, cheer us on. But we're going to be the first ones shot dead or not let out of jail. Okay? People, you got to rise. You got to get your ass up. You got to get in there, okay? You better do it. You better do it. Susan Bossy, go look, go watch her channel. She's exposing it all. I don't, I don't know how that woman is still alive. I, I, I do. I want to join forces with that woman, but not in California. No, thank you. So we got serious problems over in Sheridan. And they are the bullies. They are inciting the violence. They are the ones bringing their friends, threatening the violence. They're shutting down all transparency for the entire place when it comes to video, audio. They don't want to get caught anymore. This is a communist faction being ran by 100% socialist, borderline communists. And they show up to meetings and they, and they, and Martinez is saying something to the effect that he protects the first amendment. No, this dirty motherfucker kills you to protect what he thinks is the first amendment. That's what he does. So he's got some skeletons up here and they're starting to make their way out into the obvious error, okay? <laughs> that That's not communism. No, statism, statism is just when you're on board with, you know, everything the state is doing. Communism is when we have secret court, we hide, we threaten, people disappear. That's communism. <laughs> that's that's the beginning of a dictatorship. That's That's beyond statism. All right, you guys, I have to go. I have a wonderful weekend planned with family. One of my most precious grandchildren is about to get a wonderful birthday gift. And Cap, may I put this rant on my channel? It's epic, it's awesome. You absolutely can. Thank you for asking. A boring sandwich. I am gonna enjoy the rest of my weekend into next week. You guys stay tuned. Denver Metro Audits, I believe, will be publishing that Sheridan video. He's been working hard on it, so it shows the truth. You're going to see it. And keep following. Uh, this is not a good thing going on over there. It's a scary thing. I don't think it's a thing that people need to back down from. Pay close attention. Fascism, thank you. That applies as well. Thanks, Johnny Bravo. Good to see you in here. Appreciate it. Denver Metro Audits. He's going to have that up ASAP. Just waiting on a couple little details. He will have that video up hopefully today, maybe tomorrow. You guys, stay tuned, okay? Never know what the day is going to bring, but uh, don't back down from your dirty, corrupt government. Just be very smart because the cops are violent and they're... Uh, not rocking in the level rocking chair, you guys. That whole bunch at Sheridan. It's corrupt from the top down. There are no good cops in Sheridan. Zero. Do not forget that. They are looking for a reason to open fire. Bottom line. Take care, guys. Peace.